Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be on where Jesus said to love our enemies. What about loving the Lord's enemies? Hmm. Are we to, supposed to love everyone? Have you ever heard anybody say, God loves everybody and hate the sin and love the sinner? Where, where's that in the Bible? Oh, it's in the book of uh, uh, the Gospel of Judas, chapter 6 and verse 66. Yeah, Judas 666. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But... Let's take a look at what is in the Bible. In the book of Luke, six, chapter 6, and verse 35, Jesus said, But love ye your enemies. And uh, there's a saying that uh, friends come and go, but enemies accumulate. Boy, that's true. Yeah. And I've made some enemies in my day. Some of them I've made because of my faults and stupidity and you know uh, i should have made them friends but i made them enemies but what can you do especially when the first half of your life you serve the devil right i'm speaking of myself by the way but love ye your enemies and do good and lend hoping for nothing again and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. In Luke 6, 27, But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. Hmm. Matthew 5, 44. You know, the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall everything be established. Matthew 5, 44, But I, Jesus, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. I don't see anything here about loving God's enemies. What? God has enemies, but God loves everybody. The Billy Goat Grams of this world tell you. Now, there are people in, let's say, for example, uh, the denominational church crowd, I don't like calling them Christians, you know, the people like the TBN crowd. And they're being misled by all the TV evangelists, as I call them. And sadly, the, uh, the true Jews are in the same predicament. They're being misled by They've got so-called rabbis that mislead them in the same way. I am absolutely convinced that there is a remnant of true Jews today, just like there's a remnant of true Christians today. But in Romans 11, 28, Paul writes, As concerning the gospel, they, the true Jews, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. See, I believe that there are some true Jews in this world. Probably not very many. I mean, let's face it, the day of Pentecost, uh, a whole bunch of Jews came to the Lord. And I mean, people of the tribe of Judah, living in Jerusalem, and what have you. So, Judah was only one of 12 tribes. 
keep that in mind. There were 11 other tribes in Israel. Israel and Judah had wars against each other. They had different land areas, different capitals. Jerusalem's capital was Jerusalem. Israel's capital was Samaria. They had different kings. You ever heard of King Ahab and Jezebel? King of Israel. You ever heard of King David? He was king of Judah. Well, Judah and Israel before the split. But uh, you had different kings. They're, they're not the same. They're not synonymous. It's sort of like the uh, North and the South during the American Civil War. They're not the same. If you call a, uh, you go down to Georgia and call somebody from Georgia a Yankee, they might uh, spit some uh, tobacco chew in your face. So, all right, so we're supposed to love our enemies. What about, uh, does God love everybody? Are we supposed to love, well, does God have enemies? Let's take a look. All right, let's go take a look at Luke chapter 19. I guess we're going to start in verse 11. And as they heard these things, he added, Jesus, and spake a parable. Because he was nigh to Jerusalem, and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. See, everybody thought that there was going to be a earthly ruler to destroy Rome and restore the kingdom to Israel immediately. They were not looking for a suffering servant that was going to die for their sins. That was not the plan that they were looking for. And I believe, you know, this is my opinion from years of Bible study and what have you. I believe the economy is going to collapse. There's going to be, just as Matthew 24, Mark 13 predicts, uh, famines and natural disasters and a lot of bad things happening. People are going to be hungry, out of work. They're going to lose everything they have. Uh, disease, massive die-offs. And then there's going to appear a savior on the scene. And he will probably say that all these things are coming upon you because you're not keeping my laws. But are his laws going to be the laws of the Bible? I don't think so. I think they're going to be what's called the Noah Hyde laws, N O A H I D E. But uh, this is my educated guess. And he's going to be a savior. And he's going to have a false prophet that's going to be able to bring fire down from the sky. And I've got an entire video on this subject, so I'm not going to cover it here. I'm just telling you what I believe is going to happen. But if you want scriptural proof, I've got a video. Uh, you could always write me at Chaplain Bob, C H A P L A I N B O B, at protonmail.com, P R O T O N M A I L.com, and I'll send you the links or send me a private message on Gab. But uh, he's going to save the world. At least that's what it's going to look like. And he's going to destroy all those that come against him. So he's going to be able to mimic the miracles of Elijah and bring fire down from the sky to destroy those that oppose him. I mean, people are going to be like, whoa, you know, supernatural stuff. So, uh, yeah, you know, keep that in mind. The devil always sends his counterfeit before the true ways of the Lord come. Always. 
The devil always counterfeits everything. So, and Matthew 24, Mark 13 says that the man of sin, the Antichrist, the, the beast, the false prophet, uh, son of perdition, comes first. Read Matthew 24, Mark 13. The Antichrist comes first, the false Christ. I mean, it, it plainly teaches that. Of course, you'd never know it listening to TBN preachers. But, um, you know, they, they're counting on you to never pick up and read your Bible. And if you don't know it, I suggest the King James. But they're even messing with that. Get the oldest King James you can. Go to a hit bookstore. Buy the used oldest one you can find, like one from the 50s or the 60s. That's my suggestion. All right, so Jesus is going to speak a parable. And because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear, verse 12, he said, therefore, now this is Jesus speaking, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and return. Now, this is a parable. Who's the nobleman? Christ. What's the far country? Heaven. What's the kingdom? On earth, you know, the Lord's Prayer. Uh, Thy will be done. Um, on, in heaven as it is on earth. I probably slaughtered that, but uh, yeah, earth is, you know, there's going to be a new earth and a new Jerusalem. So, verse 13, and he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. He didn't tell them, go hide in a corner or go find a cave. No, occupy till I come. This is my kingdom. Occupy it until I come back. A return. Verse 14. But his citizens hated him. Who did the citizens hate? The king, the nobleman. And sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. Uh, not Reign as in not in water falling down from the sky. Not that kind of rain. No, no, no. Ruling. We will not have this man to reign over us. We don't want this nobleman. We don't want this king. That's what the uh, citizens that hated him sent a message and said. Hmm. Verse 15. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then the first came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. So he had, was industrious, and I guess he... Uh, you know, was trading and, you know, doing the work of a merchant and trying to gain, you know, money for the kingdom or I don't know exactly. I don't know why they're saying money here, but, you know. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in very, uh, very little, have thou authority over ten cities. Hmm. See, how we act in this world is going to impact our position in the world to come. He's going to be a ruler over ten cities in the kingdom. And the second king saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities. And another came saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. Ah, he hid it away. Verse 21. For I feared thee, because thou art an austere man. What does that mean? It means he's basically a hard man. Because thou art an austere man, thou takest up 
that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. So, you know, this is, to me, this is what this means. The Lord reaps those that other evangelists had spread the gospel. They sowed the seed and the Lord reaped the harvest. The Lord didn't, the Lord didn't plant the seed for that harvest. The evangelists did. So this guy's telling them, oh, well, you're a hard man and you're taking the things that you didn't work for and you're reaping the harvest that you didn't sow. I mean, this is basically an insult. And he, the nobleman, said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man. Oh yeah, you, you, you thought I was a hard man? Oh yeah. Taking up that I laid not down, and reaping what I did not sow? Wherefore thou, uh, wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that, my, that at my coming I might have required my own with usury? Now the Bible, ref, uh, the Bible's against usury, which is paying interest. The Bible's against that. You know, borrowing money to, to pay interest. Because you're making the bank rich, not you. But he's saying, instead of hiding what I gave you away and not touching it, and doing nothing with it, I gave you something and you did nothing with it. It would have been better if you'd have put it in the bank and done something, you know, at least I'd have gotten interest even though you're not supposed to do that. You'd have been better off doing something I told you not to do than to do nothing. At least that's how I look at it. I hope that makes sense. So verse 24. And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound and give to him that hath the ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. For I say unto you, that every one which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that he hath, shall be taken away from him. See, if the Lord gives you a talent, and you don't use it, what good is it? Listen to verse 27 carefully. Christ speaking the nobleman. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Oh, my, my enemies that don't want me to be their king, bring them here and I'm going to and, and kill them before me. Ah, oh. wow. Did you know the Lord has enemies? Oh, wait, that's right. What did we read? In verse 14, it said, But his citizens hated him. Huh. And sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. We don't want this king. We don't want this ruler. Uh, okay. So, what? Uh, hmm. So, Christ has enemies? Yeah, well, there's a difference. You see, I have enemies because of my stupid decisions in my early life. And I have enemies because I do Bible studies. And it isn't that they're my enemies. They're enemies of teaching the Bible. I mean, if I was teaching the Church of Satan, Satanic Bible, they wouldn't hate me. But because I'm teaching the Bible, they hate me. So there's, you know, I got my personal enemies, and then there's enemies of the Lord that hate me because, you know, if I was teaching the Church of Satan stuff, they'd, 
probably love me, you know, so. Now let's take a look at uh, 1 Samuel 9.9. 9. I'm going to show you what a seer is. Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, Come, and let us go to the seer, S-E-E-R, for he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. And they were called that because they would see the future, you know, a seer. But that's an old time word for prophet. So let's take a look at something here. Now let's take a look at King Ahab. He was king of Israel. You ever heard of Ahab and Jezebel? Oh yeah. All right, let's take a look. Real, quick. we're good. we're just going to skip around a little bit. I mean, it doesn't. It's not this hard to figure out. First Kings sixteen and verse thirty-three, and Ahab made a grove. Now, the uh, witches and Satanists would do their little thing in a grove. Matter of fact, they call the oak a uh, sacred oak. They worship the creation, not the creator. And witches and Satanists love to, uh, well, that's their thing. You know, they don't do, they don't do their dirty deeds in the city because they don't want people to realize, you know, they're sacrificing children to Satan. And they don't want anybody to come up with the idea of righteous indignation and end up uh, getting rid of them. Yeah. Which today I don't even think, I don't think, I think if they were sacrificing children on an altar to Satan in the middle of any big city, I don't think church people would even care anymore. They'd probably want to sign a petition, you know. All right, 1 Kings 16, 33, And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. You think the Lord was happy with uh, Ahab? No. No, absolutely not. How about 1 Kings chapter 16 and verse 30? And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. Hmm. Wow. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil, evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. Yeah, I, I, you know, uh, hate the sin, love the sinner. Eh, eh, I don't know about that. How about 1 Kings 21, 25? But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. Um, doesn't sound like, doesn't sound like the Lord is going to be too loving to Ahab. What do you think? Now, you may not know it, but Elijah is, um, probably my favorite Old Testament prophet. And, uh, he is going to be one of the two witnesses that returns mentioned in the book of Je uh, Revelation to Jerusalem to confront the false prophet and the beast. And he's one of only two people that never died in the Bible, uh, being the other being Enoch. So, in 1 Kings 21 and verse 20, uh, 
Elijah had confronted this evil king Ahab. And this is what he said. And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? You think uh, Elijah is supposed to love Ahab? I don't think so. Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil, to work evil in the sight of the Lord. I don't, I don't think I'm going to be looking for Ahab in the kingdom. All right, so with that in mind, that Ahab is a bad egg, and uh, let's just say the Lord's not real happy with Ahab. Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 18. We're going to probably read two chapters here. So, uh, verse 1. Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor and abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. Now Jehoshaphat was king of Judah. Ahab was king of Israel. And I know the TV preachers will love to tell you that Israel and Judah are all the same. Well, that's not what the Bible says. And they're counting on you never reading your Bible. Make sure you listen to the TBN preachers and make sure you send that tithe in. Praise the Jesus. Send that tithe. Uh, send God your tithe and here's our address. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry about that little... Uh, uh, Emergency fund. God will take care of you. He's going to bless you 20 times. You know, you, you send your tithe in. He's going to bless you 20 times or 100 times or whatever. Yeah. Well, I'm not one of them. All right. Verse 2. And after certain years, he went down to Ahab to Samaria. Jehoshaphat did. And Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance and for the people that he had with him and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. Now they're Jehoshaphat's having a war, and he wants to go to Ramoth Gilead, a place, and fight those that are fighting against Ahab. Verse three. And Ahab, king of Israel, said to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, see right there, verse three. Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. So he says, Wilt thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And he, Jehoshaphat, answered him, I am as thou art. You know, I am as you are. And my people as thy people. And we will be with thee in the war. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. So the king of Israel, uh, Judah wanted to get a word from the Lord. Okay, verse 5. Therefore the king of Israel gathered together of prophets 400 men and said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? You know, should I go or should I stay? And they said, Go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not hear a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him. So Jehoshaphat, you know, he wasn't uh, impressed with the 400 prophets of King Ahab. He says, wait a minute, is there not a prophet of the Lord besides these that we might ask, you know? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, there is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord but I hate him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's another, there is another prophet, but I don't, I hate him. For he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. The same as Micaiah, the son of Amiah, Imla, I'm sorry, Imla. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, Fetch quickly Micaiah, the son of Imla. 
And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, sat either of them on his throne, clothed in their robes, and they sat in a void place at the entering in of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. Yeah, the, the false prophets. And Zedekiah, excuse me, the son of Chenna, boy, some of these names, had made him horns of iron and said, Thus saith the Lord, With these thou shalt push Syria until they be consumed. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. You know, they all speak with one voice. Let thy word, therefore, I pray thee, be like one of theirs, and speak thou good. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, even what my God saith, that will I speak. You know, if the Lord tells me something, that's what I'm going to say. You know. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to, to battle, or shall we forbear? Shall we go, or shall we stay? And he said, Go ye up and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. And I, I, I really honestly, you don't get it from this, but I can hear the mocking in his voice. Go ye up and prosper, and they shall be delivered into, thine, into your hand. I, I have a feeling he was mocking them. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee? Adjure is kind of like, you know, swear to God. How many times shall I adjure thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? So I want you to tell me the real thing. Swear to God. Tell me the truth. Verse 16. Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. So what happened to their master? I guess the master gets killed, right? The king. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would not prophesy good unto me but evil? You know, didn't I tell you, he always says evil things about me. Again, he said, the prophet Micaiah, Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne, and all the host of heaven, uh, the host of heavens, the angels, and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. Listen to this carefully. Very few people teach on this. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel? What does it mean to entice? It means to trick. Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? Fall down dead is basically what it's saying. So who's going to entice or trick Ahab that he's going to go and fight and fall down dead at Ramoth Gilead. And one spake saying after this manner, and another saying after that manner. So everybody's coming up with their little plan, right? Verse 20. Then, came, then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? Okay, you're going to treat, trick him. How? Verse 21. And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit. I'm going to go and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Wow. The Lord's going to put a lying spirit into the mouth of all of Ahab's prophets. 400 prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him 
and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Go out and do it. I like your plan. That's the Bob translation. This is the Lord telling one of his angels to, to cause Ahab's prophets to lie. Of course, they probably think they're telling the truth, but they're, they're the spirit of lies. And I do not believe this is one of Satan's angels. I believe this is one of God's angels, but that's my opinion. Think about it. Now let's take a look at something real quick to back this up. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 real quick. Verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. So this is talking about the second coming and Christ's sheep being gathered together with him. Verse 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, the second coming, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. See, the second coming can't happen until the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. What does it mean? What does perdition mean? It means to fall. Didn't Satan fall from heaven? Yeah. Judas Iscariot is called the son of perdition. There's only two times two people in the Bible called the son of perdition, and Judas was one of them. So, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, unless this happened in 70 AD, and I don't believe it did, this has got to be future. But that's my opinion. Verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? Now listen, people. This is why they hate Paul. Paul gives a lot of warnings and prophecy. This is why they hate Paul. They would like you to rip Paul out of your Bible, all his writings, and throw them in the garbage. Or preferably the, the furnace, the fireplace or whatever. We don't have fireplaces here in Florida, but, uh, well, maybe they do in North Florida, but not here in South Florida. And uh, they don't want you to know. So, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity evil and sin, doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And somebody will tell you, oh, well, that's the Holy Spirit taken out of the way to allow the evil one to, you know, do his dirty work. I don't believe that. Uh, you know, if the Holy Spirit was removed from the earth, the Holy Spirit is the one that draws us to Christ. The Holy Spirit is gone. Nobody gets saved. And there's going to be people getting saved in the tribulation. So I believe it's probably Michael the Archangel. But don't hold me on that. But that's my educated guess. And if you disagree, that's okay. Um, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed. The wicked shall be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Yeah, when Christ comes back, he's going to destroy the evil one. Uh, enemy of the Lord, right? Verse 9, even him whose coming is after the working 
of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Satanic miracles, people. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Listen to this carefully. And for this cause, God, not Satan, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. God sends them a delusion. A delusion, I mean, you, you might think you're Napoleon Bonaparte. You're not, but you might think you are. You know, that's a delusion. You believe something's true, but it's wrong. It's a lie. God's going to send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they, that they all might be damned, damned, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Huh. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. We may as well finish this up. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or by our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. God is going to send them strong delusion that they will believe a lie. Why? Because they did not love the truth. They wanted to believe a lie. There are churches in San Francisco that use uh, the NIV Bible. The original NIV Bible, you could not prove with two clear verses that sodomy was a sin. Or they'll use the Queen James Bible, where all the homophobic verses have been removed. Yeah. And those people are absolutely convinced, well, I'm in a committed uh, sodomite relationship, and I love my partner. And they'll tell you, uh, and you'll tell them it, it's sin, and, oh, who are you to judge? You know, I know I'm saved. Strong delusion. Believe a lie. You know, God made a male and female. He didn't make them she-males. Or, you know, ugh. All right, so let's go back. Second Chronicles 18, verse 20. And then, then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt prevail. Go out and do even so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit, a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. Then Zedekiah, the son of Chenanna came near and smote Micaiah upon the cheek, cheek and said, Which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see on the day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. Then the king of Israel said, Take ye Micaiah and carry him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, 
and say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in prison, and feed him with bread of affliction, and with water of affliction, until I return in peace. And Micaiah said, If thou certainly return in peace, then hath not the Lord spoken by me. And he said, Hearken, all ye people. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth-Gilead. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and will go to the battle, but put thou on my, thy robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went to the battle. So think about this. Uh, Ahab is putting on common soldier's clothes, probably, but he's having the king of Judah, Jehoshaphat, the good king, oh yeah, put on your kingly robes. So this way, all the soldiers of Syria are going to think, oh, that's the king of Israel. Let's kill him. So here it is. Ahab is setting King Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, up. You know, what a sleaze. What a total sleaze. I will disguise myself and will go to the, uh, to the battle, but put thou on thy robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went to the battle. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots that were with him, saying, Fight ye not with small or great, save only with the king of Israel. Yeah, everybody concentrate on the king of Israel. Kill the king of Israel, period. All you on the chariots, kill the king. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, that they said, It is the king of Israel. Therefore they compassed about him to fight. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him, and God moved them to depart from him. For it came to pass that when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back again from pursuing him. See, Jehoshaphat was a good king. And he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord delivered him. And you know, and then the Syrians figured out, hey, wait a minute, this isn't the king of, uh, this isn't Ahab, the king we're looking for. So, verse 35, or 33. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Therefore he said to his chariot man, turn thine hand that thou mayest carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day, howbeit the king of Israel stayed himself up in his chariot against the Syrians until the evening. And about the time of the sun going down, he died. So, uh, prophet Micaiah, the true prophet, was right. You know? You know, you could go to church for 30 years and nobody would ever read this stuff to you. You know, that's me. I, I love reading. I love teaching the stuff that nobody else teaches. All the stuff that proves that the TBN people are liars. No, God does not love everybody. And I'm going to prove that to you in a little bit. No, God doesn't love the sinner, hate the sin and love the sinner. No, sometimes God hates the sinner. Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 19. Turn to page. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace in Jeru to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, remember, a seer is a prophet, the old prophet, the old word for prophet. So here is a prophet, the seer, is going to go talk to the king, the good king. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him, Jehoshaphat, and said to King Jehoshaphat, the good king, the king of Judah. And he says, listen to this carefully. Shouldest thou help the ungodly? Should you help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Whoa! 
wait a minute, I, Bob, Chaplain Bob, uh, we're, we're told to love our enemies. That's right. We are to love our enemies. Are we supposed to love the enemies of the Lord? Huh? Do you love Satan? Do you love Satanists? I don't. Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath, therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. So Jehu, the, the prophet here, the seer, asked the good king a question. Should you help the ungodly or and love those that help the Lord? You're gonna you're gonna help these people that that hate the Lord Jesus Christ or you know God the Father? Are you an idiot? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Ah. Verse 3. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee, and that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land, and hast prepared thine heart to seek God. So, Jehoshaphat, King of Judah had some good points. But the Lord was not happy that he was helping this ungodly Ahab. And Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem, and he went out again through the people from Beersheba to Mount Ephraim, and brought them back unto the Lord God of their fathers. So... And he set judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Judah, city by city, and said to the judges, Take heed what you do, for ye judge not for man, but for the Lord who is with you in the judgment. You know, if only we had godly judges today that had a fear of the Lord. We don't have that. Do you know on the Supreme Court, before uh, Darth Vader Ginsburg died, we had three Jews on the Supreme Court. Three Jews. And all the rest are Catholics. All the rest were Catholics. You got Jews and Catholics. And the... Verse 7, Jehoshaphat um, says, Wherefore, now let the fear of the Lord be upon you, Take heed and do it, for there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, nor respect of persons, nor taking of gifts. So we're talking about um, bribes, basically. You know, a rich person gives the judge a gift and uh, steals the neighbor's land, you know. Word of God, we had some godly uh, judges. So... Does the United States help the ungodly? And do we assist those that hate the Lord Jesus Christ? If you don't know the answer to that, uh, you should read your Bible more. Yeah, we do. Do you think God's wrath is on the United States? Inflation, drought, earthquakes, hurricanes, floods, fires, pestilence, disease. Uh, are you getting the picture? Or do I need to draw it out for you? Yeah. You know what King David said in Psalms 139, verses 21 and 22? He says, Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? King David hates those that hate the Lord. Well, so do I. And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Now remember, the, the, the Lord says that King David was a man after God's own heart. Ooh, uh, hate the sin and love the sinner. Sometimes God hates the sinner, too. Yeah. 
Now there's a prophet uh, uh, called Malachi. It's in the books just before the New Testament starts. Malachi chapter 1, verse 1. Listen to this. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. Why was it a burden? Let me tell you something. When people were evil in Israel, and you were a prophet of the Lord proclaiming judgment against the people, prophets didn't live very long, generally. People didn't want to hear it. I mean, just like when Jesus walked the earth, they wanted to, you know, they killed him. They killed Stephen. Do you know that 10 of the 12 apostles were killed for their faith according to history and legend? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't count Judas because he hung himself. But the only uh, one of the 12 apostles that didn't kill himself was John on the Isle of Patmos. He wrote the book of Revelation. They killed Stephen. They killed Paul. I mean, <laughs> they killed James, you know. So being a prophet was a burden. You know, they didn't, they didn't live, they didn't generally live to be a ripe old age. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel about Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. So the Lord's talking to Israel here. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yea, ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Now, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Jacob and Israel are synonymous. Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau. And if you don't know why God hated Esau, I got an, uh, an hour and 40 minute video that explains it perfectly. Well, I don't know about perfectly, but you'll definitely understand by the time you get through with it. And I hated Esau. Now, this is the Lord speaking. This isn't Malachi. This is the Lord speaking. God hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom... Well, Esau is Edom. We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Uh, sounds like what's going on in the Middle East now. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. What is indignation? Extreme hatred. And they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. Boy, that, uh, that doesn't sound too good, does it? Is there a New Testament witness? Yeah, everybody will say, oh, well, that's the Old Testament. You know, the Old Testament God, the New Testament God, they're different. Oh, really? Romans 9, 13. Paul affirms, As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. And there's a group of blacks that claim to be black Hebrews. Now, didn't you know it? Jesus is black. Satan is white. And uh, Satan, white Satan seduced black Eve and uh, had... Cain, who was white, that murdered his brother, black brother Abel. And same thing with Esau. They say we're Esau. You know, because he was red and hairy. You know, uh, you take a white person, put them out in the sun, and they turn red, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. But, you know, that's... Let's take a look at... Uh, what does Jesus look like? Oh, Revelation 1.14, John beheld Jesus. It said his head and his hairs were white, white, 
like wool, as white as snow. And of course, the black Hebrews will say, oh, well, yeah, his hair was like wool. It was like wool. It was wooly. It was wooly. No, it says his hair was white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And everybody thinks, oh, his eyes were red. Well, you know, when you turn on a gas stove, what color is the flame? Blue. Hmm. It was just a thought. And his feet like undefined brass. And brass is, you know, it's made of copper and is a kind of a golden, reddish golden brown, right? And his feet like undefined brass as if burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. Hmm. Uh, how about the uh, Bible book, The Song of Solomon, 510? The Lord speaking of Israel. Uh, of course, it's like a husband talking of a wife or a wife speaking of her husband. Uh, my beloved is white and ruddy. Uh, ruddy means having a reddish complexion. My beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among 10,000. How about the Bible book of Lamentations 4, 7? You ever heard of the Nazarites? Uh, Samson was a Nazarite. Jesus was called a Nazarene. Uh, Jesus is Nazareth, right? And they'll tell you Nazarite and Nazarene is not the same thing. I'm not convinced, but some will tell you that. Her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. No, it wasn't Hershey's chocolate milk. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Their polishing was of sapphire. Ruddy means reddish as in blush. Don't the ladies take blush and put it on their cheeks? Well, they did when I was a kid. I, I don't know if they still do, but um, yeah. Does God love everybody? Uh, it doesn't seem like it. Uh, would God deceive people? Absolutely. God deceived Ahab. And in the end times, God's going to deceive people into worshiping the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, the beast. Because they didn't want to read the Bible. They didn't want to keep the Lord's laws. You know? And they hated their neighbors not the Lord's enemies, but their neighbors. You know, Jesus said, uh, you know, the two commandments. You know, somebody asked Jesus, what was the most important commandment? And in Matthew twenty two thirty six, they said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto them, unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, it's a good idea not to live next door to God's enemies. My opinion, right? If you got Satanists that live next door, either take care of business or move. Now that's my that's that's my thing. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law, all the law and the prophets. Jesus just turned the 10 commandments into the two commandments. Love the Lord, love your neighbor. And like I say, I hope you don't live next door to Satanists. So So hopefully we have enough sense to know that we're not to love the enemies of the Lord and have them as neighbors. So, you know, maybe move, right? So, so two common things. One, the Lord does not love everybody. And two, God will, can and will deceive people if they're doing evil and don't care you know like ahab ahab did all kinds of bad stuff 
I mean, I just gave you a very quick overview. Now, um, let's take a look at something here. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12. I did an entire series on Revelation chapter 12. There's a lot of prophecy in this book, people. A lot. I've got, uh, I have about 900 videos on Bible studies on Gab. I've got a, oh, I don't know, over 1,500 on YouTube. I don't know. I, I keep saying I don't know how long I'm going to be on YouTube, and Father keeps me on there. I don't know. So, but uh, if you write me, chaplainbob at protonmail.com, I will send you links to, you know, if you want to know more about Elijah, if you want to know more about uh, anything, you know, Matthew 24 revealed, Revelation chapter 12. Uh, I've got all kinds. Of, I've been making Bible studies for, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine years, something. I don't know. But I have about 900 videos on Gab right now. About 900. Some of them are an hour, some of them 30 minutes. Eh, you know, most of them are at least 30 minutes. A lot of stuff there. A lot of stuff. All right, Revelation 12, verse 7. And there was, was, past tense, and there was war. What happens in a war? Well, when you're in a war on earth, people die, right? But this is a war in heaven. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon... And the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. So the dragon fought. Uh, how's that song go? I fought the law and the law won. Yeah, they got booted out. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. Cast out of where? Heaven. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. There was a war in heaven, people. Satan tried to kill God and take his place. Sorry, Charlie, uh, that position's already been filled, and you're not qualified. So, yeah. And God loves Satan so much that uh, Revelation 20 and verse 10 explains. Now remember, the old uh, we just read that old serpent called the devil and Satan. I've had people say the devil and Satan are two different beings. No, they're the same. Revelation 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. This is why I like the King James. The King James, now the, the modern Bible publishers are changing things but if you get the old uh, you can look up the cambridge pure it uh pure cambridge edition and download it on your computer all you got to do is type in pure cambridge edition king james bible and it'll pop up and you can download it but i would go to a bookstore and buy old old king james see words and phrases will when you read the Bible, you'll catch where phrases in one part of the Bible will lead you to another part that'll explain what it means. The Bible interprets the Bible, if you let it. Read James chapter 1. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Get on your hands and knees and ask the Lord to reveal things to you. 
you know, every time you read the Bible, you'll find something new. At least seems that way to me. So God, there was a war in heaven. God had an enemy, Satan, the devil, that old serpent, that old dragon. And he's going to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Yeah, God has enemies. And no, I don't love Satan. And I don't love those that love Satan. And believe it or not, there is actually a church of Satan. And they have the Satanic Bible. And the guy that uh, uh, started the Church of Satan, uh, guess what tribe he was of? Yeah, he was kosher, very kosher. You know, the synagogue of Satan, Revelation 2.9, Revelation 3.9. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anton Levy, well, they call him LeVay. He changed his name. They don't want you to know who they are, so. Uh Yes, God has enemies, and we're not supposed to love them. So, I hope you learned something. So, you know, I don't beg for money. You know, and if anybody wants, I've got uh, a download. You could download over a thousand of my Bible studies for free. And listen to them, put them on a USB drive, and if you got a port in your car you can, or truck you can listen to them on the way to work or shopping or whatever you know i don't deceive people on purpose i mean I'm, I'm not saying i'm right about everything but you know i don't deceive people on purpose that's the difference between me and the tbn crowd and i don't beg for money you know why am i doing this you know i'm a volunteer nobody pays me to do this and you know what they say about volunteers you know um, you get what you pay for. So, what can I tell you? And um, so, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in His name. Amen.